Hello everybody, welcome back to a new video. Uh, today I want to talk about granular synthesis. Um, granular synthesis is a type of synthesis uh, that I haven't covered on this channel before, um, but it's a very powerful type of synthesis and um, very basic what it does is it takes an, an, an audio sample and it chops it up in very small pieces and then plays those pieces back, um, for example, with a different timing or whatever, so that creates a new sound. Um, so for granular synthesis, usually you have to have a source sound already. It's not making sound from nothing, but you, you already have an input sound and then you take that input sound and then um, you turn that into a new sound. And um, before I did kind of the, 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 the little bit of research I did for this, this video, I only really thought of granular synthesis as something that you use to make like textures or very long atmospheric sounds and stuff like that. But it's actually a lot more powerful and that's what I kind of wanted to show in this video is that you can do a lot more things with granular synthesis than you might thought. Um, the reason why I thought that it was only for atmospheres and stuff like that is because normally when we're talking about granular synthesis we're talking about sounds that kind of change over time because that's what granular synthesis is very good at and if you're talking about like a lead sound uh, the notes are so short that it doesn't really have the time to you know have that same kind of um, progression throughout a single note because it's too short to actually hear it um, and therefore normally you use a different type of, of synthesis um, for the um, for like lead sounds um, that kind of thing the, 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 the more in your face kind of sound but that's actually um, something I wanted to, to tackle here how you can use granular synthesis um, to really easily kind of get the, the, a cool sound out of um, you know, out of a, out of a sore sound. Um, so without further ado, uh, let's jump right into it. All right, so here I have the project that I wanted to show you. Um, we have three different sounds that I wanted to show you. Um, I'm first going to play you the source sound that I'm using. Um, so for the first one, it's a simple drum loop here. Um, so that's what it sounds like, uh, and I managed to turn that into this. Um, so let's actually go over the setup and kind of talk about what granular synthesis really does. Um, so I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to set up the sample start as our automation, which is visible here, because um, that's the only thing I've automated here uh, in the sound. Um, so what granular synthesis does is it takes this this big waveform and it chops it up in very very small chunks maybe let's say uh, pieces like this big so it will go around and basically make cuts like this and then it will use this as kind of a waveform and maybe um, you know play the sound uh, a, a little slower and therefore it will play these little clips a few more times than it would usually do um, but in this case, we've done something um, a little bit different. Basically, we, we have this, um, this drum loop and we're deciding ourselves, okay, now we want to play um, the, 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 the sample at zero. So at 0%, it will play at the, the very start. Um, as you can see, it's loaded her up here in the, the simpler and we've selected the full range of the sample. Um, so at the start, it will start from 0% and you can see it will just play this small chunk of, of sound here and it will loop that until it comes to this point here where a new part is selected and if we go here you can see that sample start should now um, change yeah as you can see now sample start is here and this little uh, piece of audio is selected and this essentially becomes your oscillator um, in this case now this is not really that interesting because it's kind of just um, almost like morphing through a wavetable, but the wavetable is made of like a drum loop. Um, but where granular synthesis really uh, comes to shine in is if you kind of have them smooth out. So you have like the these kind of um, little slopes in there. Um, so this will really change the sound. Let's add some some slopes to to this thing here, and you can hear that it makes the sound a lot more different. Maybe not as nice 
uh, as the other one. Uh, obviously, because the other one is very static, um, the tone comes out a little bit more. So that's uh, a little bit harder here. Uh, but it's a lot more interesting. It has a lot more nice percussive, nice rhythmic elements uh, this way. Uh, and that's where um, granular synthesis really shines is with, you know, progression through a note. So you play a note and then the sound kind of changes over time. Um, so keep in mind that, that there's no filter modulation, nothing like that going on. So it's all basically the sample doing all the work for you. Um, another thing I made is um, this vocal thing here. I took this very long a cappella file and I just put that in in its entirety. And then I kind of uh, decided to, to keep it restricted to the first part of the sample. So uh, if we look at this, it's um, up until here. So basically this part of the sample is being used um, as our source sound and for just kind of morphing between them, between the different things. And again, this is a very fast example. So normally uh, you might want to stretch it out a little bit more over time. Um, but this is kind of like an, an, almost like an effect sound which you could put like in a fill or something. And it kind of changes the, the, the sound a little bit. Um, in that it's it's no longer like an, an a cappella, but you can still hear that it has the, the vocal properties, um, and uh, you will hear that it you, it still sounds like a voice. It's just not recognizable what it's actually saying, and therefore it's this, this cool element to it where it's not really recognizable. Um, but as I said um, before, this these experiments, I really didn't think of granular synthesis as something you uh, you can use for uh, like lead sounds and stuff like this. Um, the basically the stuff that I've shown above here. Um, so for that, I also wanted to give you an example of a little bit of a longer sound that it's like an, an, an atmosphere almost. And um, as a sword sound, I've used this downlifter here. Uh, which is warping a little bit weird. So yeah, that. It's basically a downlifter, so um, keep that in mind. And we change that downlifter into this sound here. So that gives you another idea of what granular synthesis actually can do. Um, so now I want to kind of show you what my workflow is um, when I'm doing stuff like this, when I'm designing uh, a sound with granular synthesis in mind. Um, I start off obviously with um, putting down a simpler. Uh, this is where we're going to drop the file in and kind of chop it up. And I, I'll just for now choose a random sample. Let's use a different drum sample, for example, like this. And um, we have to set it up so that it loops. And it does not snap, so it will not snap to a zero crossing. And now what we can do is we can turn the length down. So we can choose how long our, our sound sample, our, our, our segments are going to be. And normally I set this to around 0 0.1. Or we can go a little bit higher. Let's say 0 0.3. Let's actually hear what that sounds like. Okay, so that's fairly nice and that's very usable. Um, <coughs> so then obviously, um, let's say this is a lead sound. You create your MIDI clip and you create your note. And now all you have to do to, to kind of start out is just to modulate the starting position. And um, let's set it to 16 notes. And then with the draw mode, you can just draw in different values, kind of at random. It's not like a filter um, or anything else where, for example, the, you, the more up you, you put it, the, the more open it sounds, or it's like a continuous sounding. You don't really know what the effect is going to be when you, you change the value for this. Um, and that's what makes it really interesting to work with because um, you, you, know, you never know what you're going to get. Um, so this is what we have now. So a very simple sound here. Uh, 
um, but it already sounds like the, the, the side trance sound that we're used to, like kind of like almost an FM sound there. Um, I'm just going to copy over the, 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 the processing chain for um, this first sound here so that we have an idea how it would sound like in the mix as well if you you know fully process it and to quickly run you down what i did here is just a little bit of overdrive then it goes through ott um, then we remove the, the the low end from it because we don't want that rumble uh, one thing that you often have is that it, it introduces a lot of rumble um, in the low end. So that's something you need to, to keep in mind when doing this. Um, then we have a limiter here to kind of keep the volume in check. And then we have our delay and reverb um, to give it that ambience. So again, the, the main sound is made here and the, the, the effects just kind of add a little bit to it. Um, but you can hear that the, mid, the, the initial sound that we got is already very, very cool and very usable. And it's just made from a drum loop, which you wouldn't expect. Um, so granular synthesis is really cool to kind of take one idea and change it very quickly in something completely different, either for like these kind of short lead sound things like we had here and with the vocals or for textures. And um, one thing that I would like to mention that um, granular synthesis is also used for the tones and texture band modes. Basically it resynthesizes um, your sound with um, kind of a granular synthesis uh, version of the sound. So let's say, um, yeah, let's say we take a drum loop like this. Let's place this in here. And now if I turn this um, into basically double the timing, and we set this to, to texture mode, you can hear this is granular synthesis. Uh, this is what that sounds like. You can hear the, the small snippets of sound and that's this is where you edit them. So this would be the length and this would kind of be the fade, um, which is something I haven't talked about yet. So I'll quickly explain that as well. Um, so let's drop in the same um, sample here and kind of, I think that's the same sample. No, um, this is the same sample and kind of try to recreate it. Um, so we're going to play a C3 note here. And then we're going to set up a very short timing here for the loop. Uh, let's set 0 0.1. And um, we're going to set up a little bit of a fade, which uh, allows for crossfading. So it doesn't click so much and it's a little bit nicer to listen to. Uh, that's the same thing as what the flux does. Uh, here um, and then what we have to do is just play the start till the end so this is going to progressively scan through the sound and um, just play it um, at half the speed that it would normally play so this would sound very similar obviously it depends on how long your actual snippet of sound is that you're using uh, in this case, it's a little bit shorter. So if you want it to sound a little bit closer, you would probably make it a little bit longer. I would say that's pretty close. Um, so let's say you're now <coughs> like warping it. Um, let's say you're doing something like this, where you, you warp it and you have this, this very um, significant warping feature there. Um, that would translate in something like this, where you, you kind of, you know, uh, here it's going a little bit slower through the sample and here it's going a lot faster. So you end up. Obviously, um, it kind of depends on, on the exact timing and I didn't get the exact timing right here, um, but that doesn't really matter. It's just kind of an example to show you um, what it actually does and how, how um, both the, the warping mode as well as just granular synthesis in general works. And uh, I hope this was uh, a sufficient explanation. Uh, it's a little bit of a hard concept to uh, um, understand. Um, there are also versions of granular synthesis which are a lot harder, which I didn't go into. Um, for example, there are uh, 
versions, uh, for example, in Omnisphere, um, their granular synthesis engine um, allows you to um, basically divide the sample up into multiple snippets at once. So here at any time, let's say we're here, we only have this one snippet here, but um, some granular, some more advanced granular synthesizers allow you to pick um, multiple snippets uh, at the same time and kind of play them all together and then pitch them differently uh, from each other. So that it, it can be a lot more advanced if you really wanted to, um, but it's a very powerful tool that you should definitely consider using uh, if you're lacking a little bit of inspiration in sound design, then this is uh, a tool that's very useful for creating that sort of thing. Um, so with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video and you, I hope it, you find it helpful. If you did, feel free to leave a like. And if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.